Hi everyone, this is Swati from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we'll talk about Agile testing. Now to be totally honest, there's nothing like Agile testing. Um, we are only going to talk about how the QA projects, the quality assurance or in simple terms um, software testing projects uh, proceed in the context of an Agile development methodology. Uh, so the way we are going to handle this topic is um, Agile in itself is actually a complete comprehensive topic which needs a few hours of training to master but I'm going to talk about a few highlights of the Agile methodology in general and then we'll talk about uh, the testing, uh, you know, the, the approaches that are taken uh, in order to effectively conduct QA or in other words functional or system testing um, in a project where uh, the development methodology that is being followed is Agile. Uh, so Agile is basically a very fast, rapid and iterative model of software development. Now if you were to compare this with the traditional waterfall method, in the traditional waterfall method you would have collect all the requirements, get like you know, uh, let's say for example you have 100 requirements, you'll collect them all, uh, first you would do a business analysis, then you know, uh, translate them into functional requirements, um, then translate that into technical requirements, then coding, then the testing, and then, you know, the deployment. So basically, uh, each step is followed after the previous step is 100% complete. So usually waterfall model projects are more thorough. Um, they are heavily reliant on documentation and, um, you know, there are much uh, time in the sense that uh, I won't say that you know as a project as an entire project waterfall model is takes a longer than agile project because that won't be a fair comparison because you know um, in agile we are working with a very small set of requirements at a given point of time so time wise probably there might not be a great benefit when you use agile project but the agile um, but the traditional waterfall model if that were to be followed um, for us to get an initial version of the software up and running out to the you know live customers that takes longer than in the context of an agile project now the way agile project works is the same set of 100 requirements they are prioritized they are you know uh, analyzed uh, the business teams input is taken and then based on that uh, you know sprints are designed so sprints are nothing but uh, you know complete development life cycle within um, the agile project itself uh, which lasts anywhere between two to six weeks and consists of five to nine team members and here the focus is not really on thorough examination and analysis it is more on people so it relies on people's decision making capabilities and how fast they are able to you know react to a situation and all of that so this is uh, Agile Manifesto really you know places a lot of emphasis on people and a lot less on process and that is one of the reasons why there is little or no documentation uh, now that is like the overall gist of it so the way Agile works is you would have like a complete backlog so the entire requirement list is called the backlog um, the product backlog and then the product backlog is nothing but you know all the requirements in the context of Agile that's called user stories User stories are nothing but, you know, requirements that are coming up for the software and these user stories are prioritized and a certain amount of requirements or user stories are picked up and chosen to be the scope of a particular sprint and that sprint they will complete the entire cycle. That is, they would analyze, code, uh, test and deploy. So now that we're talking about testing, now testing itself, again, um, there is really no theoretical, you know, foundation that guides us that, you know, testing has to happen in an XYZ format in an Agile project. N none of that, you know, rules are uh, laid out. But based on my experience in an Agile project, it could go one of these two ways. Either you could have it along with the development, that is, you would um, have this five to nine scrum member team in which the QA team is also a part of it and um, the same you know the mini waterfall is followed in there that is the requirements are built uh, the code is developed for, and then you know the testing team tests it and deploys it now testing again you know um, let's talk a little bit about the software testing lifecycle and how it adapts itself or you know how it changes itself to the uh, agile methodology so let me just uh, grab a notepad and talk about this now testing life cycle has three phases, the test, plan, 
design and that is followed by execution or you know the actual running of the tests now in the test plan phase you would have a test plan document as an output and in the design phase you will have test scenarios which is much more high level pointers on what to test and that is followed by test cases which is like you know detailed step by step conditions of what you would test now this is followed by you would have the application under test you would apply these test cases plus the data and you would arrive at the results whether you know the application behaves uh, in the expected way or not so this is basically the way testing happens so if you were to follow an agile model the test plan that phase is still going to be a part of it but you're not going to write not now typically based on my experience a test plan is somewhere between um, a 20 or 25 page document but if it were in an agile project it would probably a one or two page document that will just uh, highlight like you know um, schedules the scope and stuff like that and in the test design phase you would just have the test scenarios the test cases might be eliminated and the execution is again the same you would have the application under test you'd perform the steps you'd apply the data you'd have the results uh, once the results do not match you would have defects where you would manage the defects so all that process remains the same so test uh, the testing activity wise there are slight adaptations here and there but the an overall software testing life cycle remains the same so if it is in line with the development team that is the first um, you know approach in approach number one what really happens is say if there is a four week sprint the development team would first I mean first of course there will be a business analyst team who will analyze this uh, come up with the use cases stuff like that again none of this would be documented in an informal basis and the code would be developed following which there would be a QA and testing now normally while the development is in progress the two year QA team would do preparation work that is we would create test plans uh, test documentation all of that stuff and then we perform the QA and then the application would be already deployed and all uh, of these activities would happen in the period of the four weeks so this is approach number one and this is the one that is commonly used in the market very very popular but this approach again um, I wouldn't say this is true in all cases but in my experience this approach is slightly flawed because uh, again you know developmental delays or unanticipated delays are common with whatever methodology we are following so in case something like that happens QA team really really loses a lot of time uh, and then we wouldn't have as much time as we need in order to test because Agile is very very uh, strict in terms that the sprint timelines don't extend so if you have a four week sprint that's it you're not gonna go beyond the four week timeline so this is where the QA team faces either the problem of being underutilized or the problem of being just you know um, not having enough time to test all that there is to test another new experimental um, method that I have actually successfully implemented in one of my project is sprint plus one now I would love to take you know credit for this but unfortunately this is not a you know uh, thing that uh, I have come up with this is actually a method that I, I um, got aware of um, via the HP's Bright Talk, one of the HP Bright Talks uh, webinars. So this was in regard to the HP Agile Manager, which is HP's product for Agile Management. So what the Sprint Plus One method uh, it indicates is, I mean, you can call this in any other name, like, you know, a QA lag method or anything like that. Uh, but Sprint Plus One is the name that HP has used, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, now what this approach is, is you would separate the QA and the dev sprints so this is how this happens sprint one would just be a development sprint so normally if it were to be a uh, you know a two weeks sprint let's say the whole sprint is two weeks uh, if you were to follow approach one we were actually you know develop test deploy all in two weeks but then following the sprint plus one the development team would have a one week long sprint and then once sprint 2 begins the development team will move on to the next set of requirements 
while the QA team will test the requirements that were developed in the Sprint 1. Similarly, when, when a development team moves to Sprint 3, QA team will be doing Sprint 2. So this is one way to ensure that the QA team gets as much time as it needs in order to test and you know none of it is uh, disrupted and all of that. So this is another approach of how testing takes place in uh, you know an agile method. Now this is something that you know the approach to the sprint plus one I've been implementing it quite for quite a while now and I'm seeing very good results so that's something I'm, I'm going to recommend if you're you know looking for a way to incorporate it and also if there were other forms of testing like performance testing or security testing which actually normally precede or you know um, sorry succeed the uh, s normal system testing they usually follow the sprint plus one so it's only a matter of applying the same concept to functional testing so testing wise the process wise or you know the approach the strategy wise I do not see any difference between uh, testing a traditional waterfall model project and the agile project the only difference is you know how much documentation you're writing and how much time you get and you know a slightly limited scope um, I hope this video has been helpful in you know um, putting forward a few concepts on how uh, testing happens in an agile framework uh, so as always please feel free to let us know if you have any questions or comments thank you so much